Warning, the following program has been rated T for truth. You can't handle the truth. Oh, we think you can. Welcome to the Naked Truth Report with your host, truth warrior and myth buster, Kathleen Wells. The place where we distinguish fact from fiction, where data is used to drive points home and where Kathleen takes the position that Democrats and black politicians have destroyed black America. Welcome to the Naked Truth Report. Now, your host, Kathleen Wells. Hi, this is Kathleen Wells, host of the Naked Truth Report, and I'm here at FAIR Federation for Immigration Reform Hold Your Feet to the Fire event at, in Washington, D.C., and I'm excited to have Marianne Mendoza with me, who is an angel mom, and she is here to talk about her experience uh, with suffering the loss of her son, Brandon, to an illegal alien. Marianne, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, t- talk to me about your son, Brandon. Give us some... Brandon was a very fun-loving, um, just a, a well-rounded, beautiful man inside and out. And he cared about his community, and he cared about his fellow Americans and the safety of them. That's why he chose to become a police officer. On May 12, 2014, in the very early morning of the hour, or early morning hours, he was on his way home from work. And a repeat illegal alien criminal who was over three times the legal limit drunk, high on meth, had driven over 35 miles the wrong way on the freeway, slammed head on into my son on a blind curve going over 100 miles an hour. And that's the day that changed my life forever. Um, losing a child is is just so, the grief is so unexplainable, you know, and it took me for a, wh- a while to come out of it. But I had gone on many ride-alongs with my son. You know, he was aware of illegal alien crime in Arizona and our communities. And... Um, I just didn't realize the depth of it until after he was killed when I started doing research, especially after I knew that that the killer of my son had been shown leniency after committing crimes in the country, didn't show up for his court dates, was caught coming back over the border, and they took him back up to Colorado, and the judge gave him a slap on the hands and never punished him or deported him for what he had done before. And it it makes you probably feel like uh, your son's death was avoidable. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and many people say it could have been a drunken American that, that killed your son. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. But it wasn't. Right. That's the reality. You're dealing with the reality. But for this illegal alien, your son would be with us. Correct. Right. And that's why you've gone on to talk about the necessity for stricter border control. For the bo- You're a, a supporter of the border wall. Absolutely. I'm on the advisory board for We Build the Wall, the wall that the American people have built. Um and we have to end sanctuary policies. We have to stop, you know, creating a sanctuary place for these criminals to go. They know that our politicians fight for them. What other country can you or I go to illegally, have politicians change laws to protect you, hand you everything for free, kill one of their citizens, have the politicians fight for you and provide a sanctuary place for you to go when, mm. their, when their citizens would be punished and, and jailed? Mm. This is the, the sad place that our country is in right now, mm-hmm. that we have politicians who care more about illegal aliens, and they aren't a race, folks. They're people from all over this world that are here illegally exactly. present in yeah. our country. Exactly. They care about them more than they do you or I. Yeah, the rule of law is what's most important. Yes. Yes. And, you know, I had Tom, Tom, Tom Tancredo on yesterday, Love him. and he was talking about the fact that he was uh, talking to uh, one of the politicians, DeLay, Tom DeLay, and Tom DeLay said to him, listen, you better change your attitude and what you talk about if you want to keep your career in politics. You see? Yes. The politicians are really into keeping their career. Right. As opposed to pursuing the interest of the American people. And, you know, Donald Trump was frightening to them when he right. when he right. decided he was going to run. And when he was actually talking about it, this man had the guts to talk about what's really affecting our country. And he's what we needed exactly. Yeah. And, and he brought angel moms out of the shadows and, and gave us a platform and let us share our stories of our children who had become collateral damage in this disgusting fight in D.C. Yeah, before... before um Trump, how were how were what were you what were the adver- what was the adversity you were facing? What was kind of what were you going through? I had sent two letters to President Obama mm-hmm. about the situation. My son was a law enforcement officer, mm-hmm. and I didn't even get condolences back from them. Which that isn't what I was asking in my letters. I was asking for answers mm-hmm. of what was going on with the illegal aliens in our country and the leniency being shown to them. 
and they never responded and I was very disappointed because I was in DC at one point a block away from the White House mm -hmm. at a, on a trip I had notified them that I'd be in town if they wanted to have a visit with me and President Obama was hosting illegal alien children talking to them about them being here and getting a college education the dreamers and, and the next day his wife was um, entertaining illegal alien teachers can you imagine? It's such a slap in the face. Right. There, you know, and it may, you know, and I am a convert because I was a Democrat initially. And I, I voted for Obama once, you know. And when I started looking at the data, in fact, it was this illegal alien immigration stuff, this illegal alien business, because Julian Castro wants to get rid of, rid of the word alien. We must keep it. But this illegal alien business is what got me to be a, a Trump supporter. Right. Because it's adversely affected black Americans. And I'm, that's one of the things that I do with my show, why black Americans must get off this Democratic Party. You're, you're um, voting for your own demise when you vote Democrat. Right. Because this has been a problem, okay? And they're not doing, the, Dem the Democrats have exacerbated the problem by not trying to address it. Right. They've made it worse. And in fact, they want elite, they want all of Latin America in the uh, United States. Right, and, and you know, when you look at the, the problems that our country has, so many blighted areas and cities is right. because of those, those people moving into those communities because they won't assimilate to our lives. Right. And they're hiding in the shadows because they, they have stolen an identity or they have committed a crime. Right. And so they tend to stick in those kind of areas and, and you know, bring them down. Our schools are overwhelmed. Our medical facilities are overwhelmed. Wages have, you know, there's jobs that Americans could have. Look at the the meat plants that was raided right, exactly. and all those people in that in that town Americans at one of those jobs exactly you know so a lot of it most of our problems goes back to that now you have a Senate who voted who's voted to um, remove the national emergency and not allow Trump to take the money out of the military funds this is a national security issue on our border what the Senate voted to remove that yes yesterday oh but you've got a Congress and a, Senate, and a Senate who are complicit, and they have stolen $198 billion through last week. That's what money has been spent on illegal immigration in this country this year. Mm -hmm. $198 billion. Where did, what programs did they steal that money from? And your listeners need to understand, I've paid the ultimate price. I've lost my son. But everybody listening to this program is a victim of illegal alien immigration because they're forcing you Oh, yeah. To support them financially. Exactly. Exactly. We're supporting them financially. You know, the schools in California were number one when I was in public schools. Now we're at the bottom because of bilingual education. We're at the bottom. Right. And so your son, you were in Arizona. You reside in it. You're in there. And your, this accident took place in Arizona. Yes. So he tra he was in Colorado initially, the illegal alien. And Correct. then, and then what, what after he committed this heinous crime, what happened? He died in the accident. And... I've been served justice um, immediately. A lot of angel families, the aftermath of it, you know, 80% of the, of the um, illegals who kill Americans, they, they get away, mm -hmm. you know, or these sanctuary cities and counties and stuff, they don't put ice holds on them, and, you know, they just release them from jail and they disappear into the interior of the United States, mm -hmm. assuming a new identity mm -hmm. and living another life. Right. So a lot of angel families never get justice, and that's a sad thing. You know, mm -hmm. and about 20% of them do get a sentence, and, and, you know, it's not nearly what an American citizen would get for that same crime. In Arizona, up until a few years ago, an illegal alien only had to serve 50% of their sentence. An Arizona citizen had to serve 85% for the same crime committed. Why was that? I don't, I don't know. I mean, Governor Doug Ducey changed that, but there's many, many states across this country that are still using that and, and only having them serve 50% of their sentence. These are things that don't come out in the news, they're not discussed, mm -hmm. that the average American doesn't know. And Angel Dad Steve Ronnebeck and I drove from Arizona to DC on the I-40 and we made seven stops and, and had speaking engagements and brought these statistics and these stories and the things that you do not hear, you don't even think to worry about 
to our fellow Americans mm-hmm. because our politicians aren't listening They're to no us. Good. Yeah. And we've got to talk to our fellow Americans who are the voters and the people putting these people in office. Right, right, right. That's the only way, grassroots is right. the only way to do it. What we're doing now and with the help of talk radio, I think this is a good thing. I love, this is my first year at the Hold Your Feet to the Fire event and I really appreciate being here and real, really appreciate meeting all the guests and getting all the information. Yes. And make Because it gives you hope. Right. You know, maybe we're in our bubble, but... But I mean, you know, after it's a good double to be in for two days, <laughs> right? <for> two, <laughs> it's like everyone on the same page for two days. Do you know what I mean? And then you go back and you turn on the TV and you see the Democrats are in, yeah, you know, this whole impeachment inquiry, which yeah. they haven't, they've been doing forever anyway, and right. it's gonna go nowhere. It's a distraction, folks. A distra- Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain because there's many more important issues that there's our president important. is focusing on, and he's fighting for you and I. He's fighting for us every single day, and we have to support this man. I, He's working for free. I know. I Listen, I really, I hate to say it, but I love President Trump. And I say I hate to say it because, you know, they say, oh, you adore a politician or a president. But it's not, I, because I feel so bad about what has happened in Los Angeles. Yeah. I'm a native Los Angelino, and those neighborhoods that used to be traditionally black neighborhoods are gone. We are, black Americans are 40% of the homeless now. And then I had the building inspector come on my show and tell me that 80 to 90% of the construction jobs are held by illegal aliens. Mm. And then you have a Democratic national uh, the the um, competition, whatever it is, they get on the stage. They're running for they, their debates, and they're speaking in Spanish. Right. You know, and this bothers me. You know, not because um, I'm against Spanish as a language per se. It's because I see how Los Angeles has become. Um, balkanize. It's not a melting pot. It's or, it's a salad bowl, as they say. Everyone is segregated and not. You cannot effectively and efficiently communicate with your fellow citizens when they can't speak your language. Well, and you have presidential candidates running for president speaking of the Spanish. United States speaking Spanish, speaking a foreign language. It's so disrespectful. It's so disrespectful. And you know. People have got to understand this is not an organic movement of hate and unpatriotism across this country. This is a well-funded, well-planned attack, not only on our president, but on Americans. Right. Because they want globalism. Yes. The new world old order. Right. And, yeah. and you know what? When, when I met a, I went to the Trump rally in Albuquerque the night before mm-hmm. we kicked off our tour, mm-hmm. and there were black Americans, there were Hispanics, there was Asian, there was whites. And it was a, such a feeling of love and unity. Mm-hmm. And we conservatives don't see the skin color the way that they're constantly pointing out to us. You're my fellow American. No, you that's all to, I you see. You don't have to convince me. Listen, Democrats have destroyed black America. This is, you it's see, sickening. that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you can, you're preaching to the choir here. Do you know what I no, mean? No, I'm just talking to your <laughs> listeners. It's like, you know, it's sad. And then we walked outside of this Trump rally. Right. And it's F you and F our president right. and, and the hate and throwing water right. bottles. Right. And, and I'm like, but you're preaching to your to your party that you're the, the party of love and unity. Right. It's. It's mind-boggling that people actually even believe these people. They're hypocrites. And I think, more, you know, you have Brandon Strzok's walk away and Candace Owens, Blexit. So gra- hopefully more, I don't, you know, I know President Trump's going to win 2020. Oh, absolutely. But let's hope more and more, I know Latino Americans support President Trump. I saw a poll, we don't know about polls, but by 46%. That, that's relevant and significant. Look, my ex-husband is Hispanic. Mm-hmm. And his whole family supports me in my fight. And they don't like being bottled up the way the liberals do with all the illegals they're not illegals right they're proud latino americans exactly and you know they're getting their voice now and they're making themselves heard and this is what everybody needs to be doing i think as yeah. women who support trump right. as latinos who support trump right. we need to not be afraid to say it out loud right. they're trying to shut us down right. with their hate and their physical you know they make us into physical punching They're trying to out. intimidate us. Right. But let me tell you, this is why we love Trump. Yes. He's not the traditional politician, so he's not selling out America. And we love him because he's a fighter. Mm-hmm. He's not going to apologize, and he's going to punch back and punch back even harder. Right. And we need more. And we relate to that. We relate to that because that's how I am, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm a truth teller, and the truth will set you free. That's yes. the most important thing, I think. Yes. You know? So we're very happy to have you, Marianne. And tell us a little, a few more things that you'd like to mention to my listeners. Um, just 
you know, check out our website, MakeAmericaSafeAgainTour.com. Um, we're going to be adding some more cities. We're, we're teaming up with sheriffs, you know, who, who think that this might be an important message to get to their communities and radio show hosts that we're talking to. You know, we're not opposed to coming and doing a town hall and, and speaking to our fellow Americans and telling the stories and giving the statistics out. Um, they can go to our website. They can email me through there if they want more information. When I get back mid, mid-November, um, I am going to get some bullet points of what Steve and I have talked across the mm-hmm. country about mm-hmm. to help our, our fellow Americans spread the word mm-hmm. and get the statistics and the information out that we have. And angelfamilies.com, if you feel so inclined, please donate. You know, Steve and I are doing this on our own dime. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have big donors like the ACLU and Pueblo Sin Fronteras and El Ocho Lotto, the 501c3 tax exempt organizations that are aiding and abetting illegal aliens in our country. They have millions of dollars donated. Yeah, they, and they, we have to beg for a $50 donation I, to that, keep us going. And aren't they down there in Latin America and certain countries in El Salvador, El Salvador, Honduras, or whatever, telling them you can have free things? Yes. This George Soros is funding this stuff, isn't it? Oh, it's over $9 million this year he's put into all of these organizations. And folks, they're, they're tax exempt. And aiding and abetting illegal aliens coming into this country. And that's one issue that Angel Families, we do want to take on and we do want to bring up to our legislators to stop these organizations from being tax exempt. They're having millions of dollars donated. You need to pay taxes on that, folks. They're, not, they're doing unlawful treasonous things. Yeah, and I think they want to destroy America. Yes. Oh, absolutely, without it's a doubt. It's obvious, it's obvious. Yes. But what is the ultimate, destroying America and then what, they're in control? Open borders, one world government. Look, Hillary losing in 2016, that was never expected from them. And it sent them into such a tailspin. And this, what has been happening the past two and a half, three years, is the end result of her losing that battle because these people who want the open borders and one world government have to fight that much harder to accomplish this in, 2000, in 2020. We they're, can't let it happen, folks. They're relentless. Yes. They will never let they're up. They're like snakes and, and the evil and the lies and the things that they tell. And um, our country and will be gone. Is, the media is in cahoots with them. Yes. They're like, you know, they're diabolical. Yes. It's like, get rid of this. And it's going to affect them. But, how, but, but they're so stupid they don't realize how it's going to affect them. They think, think they're, they're doing it to us, but it's going to affect everybody in this country. But you think the media folks are really naive? Like, like you're, they're saying they're, they're naive. Look, if you got a good-paying job at CNN and they get their talking points at 3 in the morning and what they're all going to be talking about that day, they're going to do their talking points, whether they believe it or not. I can't. I find it very hard to believe that people are this stupid. I really do. Because it's like basic. Right. Supply, economic supply and demand. You have people coming in with, who aren't here legally. They're going to be suppressing wages and taking people's jobs. Right. Do, have you gone on CNN or at all? Um, I was on CNN one time. Um, they invited me on with Jake Tapper, and mm-hmm. it was a Paul Ryan town hall. Mm-hmm. And I regretted it because, you know, I got up and I told my son's story, and Paul Ryan was all apologetic and, you know, sympathetic. And then a doctor participant got up and his whole tune changed and it was completely opposite of how he was reacting to me so um i would Mm -hmm. love to get on there Mm -hmm. and have a conversation um to where i'm not pitted against somebody else or they have somebody else behind me you know i just need to get on there and tell my story Mm -hmm. my truth Mm -hmm. i'm not a politician i have no reason to lie my child is dead i'm separated forever and their listeners need to hear that so how did President Trump respond to you? How, has your, how was your a- interaction with President Trump? President Trump is a very good friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I trust this man with my life and my country. Um, I've met with him many, many times in the White House. I've been invited for a roundtable about sanctuary policies with, with law enforcement. Um, I was there at his side when he signed the, the, his first veto. Mm-hmm. And he pulled me forward to speak. He always remembers me. Um, and I want your listeners to know he's a very compassionate man who loves his country mm-hmm. and is fighting for all of us every single day. This man is incredible what he does. And, and you know, he may put out some silly tweets, but guess what? Don't tell me none of your listeners have tweeted out something they regret five minutes later. But you know what? You have to stand by your values mm-hmm. and be the person that you are. And he was voted into office even after he was tweeting all that stuff before. So mm-hmm. obviously people embraced because he was being real with us. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, like the never Trumpers and the left and the Democrats and the media folks, they're just they can't relate. No. And it, that says more about them than it does about Trump. Yes. Because to me, he's I'm like a Trump, you know, direct, straightforward. No, you know, 
straightforward, no holds bar. I just tell it straight. Yeah. And I appreciate other people who are like that. So it says more about them that they're so put off by him. And, you know, when I'm at the White House, um, when I was there for the sanctuary policies, he did invite me into the Oval Office, and I got a picture with him. But I said, you know, I would rather not even be here, never have met you, mm -hmm. because it would mean my son was with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, I feel like I'm talking to you when I'm talking to him. He mm -hmm. makes you feel that comfortable. Mm -hmm. You don't even stop to think, this is the president, president of right. the United States. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's just that genuine and that caring. Right, 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 really. right, right, right. Unlike Obama, I think the Obamas, I voted for them once. As I said, I used to be a Democrat. When I started looking at the data, then I began to see how phony they yeah. are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Be and any person that believes there's 66 genders, I have a problem with their ability to think. Oh, I know. That's what the Democrats are putting forward, right. 66 genders. And, you know, I heard a woman the other day say, a young girl, well, you know, I'm non-binary. -bina yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I and, and let me just tell you something. There's only two genders. There can be multiple sexual preferences, but it still comes down to two genders. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Since time immemorial, okay? Right. Right. And it's not going to change because the Democrats decided in 2015 it should change. Right. You know, civilization happened before the Democrats were around lying. <laughs> I know. You know, one, one parting thing that I want to say. Um, I saw pictures of Trump. You know, he's at the U.N. And, and dealing with this coming home today. But he looks exhausted. He looks tired. And I just ask your pray, your listeners to please pray for him and give him the strength to, to continue leading us into the greatness that I know he's going to. You know, they're, they're such fighter. They're really against him now with this impeachment you know. BS, okay? And they're so relentless. You know. Diabolical, I believe. Well, I want to thank you, Marianne, for being a guest on the Naked Truth Report. I really appreciate you being here. I appreciate it. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. This is Catherine Wells, host of the Naked Truth Report, and I'm here at FAIR's Federation for Immigration Reform. Am I saying that right? Wait, let me look at it. Federation for Immigration Reform, FAIR's Radio Row event, which is taking place in D.C. And, it, you know, you know, my truth warriors and mythbusters know that FAIR it focuses on immigration. So I've got a guest now, and her name is Miss King, Miss Angela King. Yes, thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm so excited. You're you're very welcome. Well, let me let's talk about why you are an advocate for criminal what, justice reform. Yeah, pro life. <laughs> right, 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 right. I was just reading right. it. Is that okay? You have a why, Tell us why you've got motiv got motivated to talk about these issues. Immig well, how immigration, separation of powers. Well, to be completely honest, um, it was probably about a year ago. Um, I saw how America was coming together to fight for the families at the border. And I remember my own story. Um, 15 years ago, I was arrested. I had been in a Georgia prison on a nonviolent crime. I ended up giving birth to my daughter chained to a bed what were you with the share of watching. It was for title fraud. Title fraud? Yes, and nonviolent. Um, I ended up giving birth to my daughter with the sheriff watching while I was chained to the bed. And then 24 hours after that, she was snatched right out of my arms. And I was sent back to her overcrowded prison. And thank God for me, I had family to get my child. So she did go to family. But there was another girl that was transported with me that was pregnant. And her baby ended up going to the state. So when we talk about family separation... And I saw how hard, like, everybody was fighting for the families at the border. And, and I mean, it's no, it's no secret. They committed a crime. That's why they've been arrested. I said, imagine if people went this hard for all of our families that have been separated, even our families that have been separated by mass incarceration. Um, if we can get so upset that we start a whole movement for people that are only separated for 20 days because they have to go through processing, 
why are we not that motivated to fight for our families that have been separated for 10, 20, 30 years, have life sentences for marijuana convictions, something that is now legal in just about every state. So family separation has been going on for a very, very long time, way prior to what's happening at the border. Um, and uh, for me, it's like all children are traumatized uh, when they're separated from their parents. No child acts to be separated from their parent. Um, we have so many youth, black youth, that have grown up fatherless. Um, we have so many children in cages right now. See, they don't like to talk about our children in cages called well, juvenile you're detention about it, And center. we need more people like you. I love to hear what I love what you're saying because right. you don't hear this narrative. Mm -mm. They've forgotten so, about all of our children in juvenile detention centers. And yeah, we keep voting Democrat. What's but they wrong tell us? us, "Oh, those kids deserve to be there." Well, wait a minute. Let's talk about facts. Let's talk about right. the fact that nearly 80, 95 percent of the children at the border are adult age children between the ages 16 and 19. They're young men. And come to find out, 33 percent aren't even biologically related. Hello? Not even so related. Like and they came here alone. Right. So um, another thing that I, I try to bring up constantly to the black community is where do you think that those illegal immigrants are going once they make it through processing? They're not going to your rich, affluent neighborhoods. They're coming to our neighborhoods. To take your jobs. To take your jobs. Not only that, let's talk about the schools. Our children are already failing. They're in classes that are overcrowded. And bilingual. So they're, exactly. English as a second language. It, come on now. So it'll be right. an influx. And then imagine teachers or people in the community that don't know how to speak Spanish. They're they going to be pushed out. They lose they're going their to job. lose their jobs. And then another thing that we have not been considering in the black community is the fact that when immigrants come here and they come into our communities, we see them all the time. They own the gas stations. They own the corner stores. Right. They own the beauty supply stores. They make their money off of us, and then they send their money back home. And this is it what does I, I circulate in our time. economy. I've talked about that a thousand times on the Nanaka Truth Report. I'm out of Los Angeles, and black Americans should have businesses all up and down Crenshaw Boulevard, that main drag from Pico all the way down to Inglewood. And I've said this repeatedly to black Americans. We've had five decades of no businesses. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. And that's something that, that we're not paying attention to. And I like to tell them, study the history. Study what has happened in L.A. You're from L.A. LA so what's happened to the black population? 40 it's shrunk to 13 percent. And 40 percent of them are homeless. Homeless, sleeping on the streets, right. veterans. And so I get a lot of flack. People say, how could you support this president? How could you support this administration? And I like to tell people all the time, here's my thing. I'm a parent, right? So when I make my money and I get paid, I have a responsibility to make sure that my bills are paid and my children are fed, my household is taken care of. That does not mean that I won't help the children across the street or the children down the street. That just means I have a moral responsibility to my household. First and foremost. President Donald Trump is the parent of America. Right. He has a responsibility for the American citizens. First and foremost. Now, we have right now 3.5 million blacks that are still in poverty, that have been here, that have been in this country, that are American citizens, still struggling. Why are we pushing them to the wayside? Why are we saying illegal immigrants before black Americans that are still here and are still struggling? We haven't even gotten out of the rut yet. But we were supposed to because LBJ on his Great Society and War on Poverty spent $3.2 trillion to combat poverty in the mid 60s so what happened to that 3.2 trillion dollars which would be worth now 22 trillion dollars in today's dollars what did that money do absolutely and then let's, let's talk about the fact that 46 percent of the black population has been aborted see there is a reason why the democrats are fighting so hard for illegal immigrants because they know that in 20 to 30 years from now the black vote won't even count there are too many factors it's not going to count after 2020 that's what Kenneth Owens said after this 2020 election the black vote is ir officially irrelevant yeah once we're replaced i mean here's the thing we've got so many factors right we have mass incarceration there are still a lot of black people in prison they're the majority we're fighting for them thanks we to joe have, biden thanks to joe biden Three strikes bernie sanders bernie sanders signed it right. bill clinton passed it right let's be clear okay so let's talk about the fact that we have we cannot reproduce without the black male for one so we have mass incarceration that's a factor 
We have homosexuality because it does not reproduce. That's a factor. We have um, violence, where there's gang violence, police involved shooting, and then we have women that are aborting all of our children. How can we fight against all of these epidemics at one time and no one is seeing what is happening? Thank God that we have platforms like The Naked Truth and other shows that are willing to give black conservatives a voice to say, hey, guys, wait a minute. It's time for us to wake up. We're headed in the wrong direction. What is it going to have to take? Is it going to be 20 years from now when we're all erased? I'll be so old then. I don't know if I'll be hiding, fighting. You're going to have well, to take the mantle. Well that's, the, well, that's the thing. They know that we're going to die off. We're I mean, gonna we die. are going to live forever. And if we're gonna, aborting our children, who are we going to pass the torch right. to? We yeah. are aborting our futures. 20 years from now, when they want to know why the black, count, the black vote doesn't count, it's because we aborted them. We aborted all our votes. And I think that it's just time for the black community to wake up. And this isn't about racism, right? Because people like to say all the time, hey, Donald Trump is the president. Listen, to me, a racist wants us to continue killing our children. Because every time we abort one of our children, is one less for them to worry about. Excuse well, me, Lord. But let me tell you, most black folks don't even know the definition of racism. Mm -hmm. They just use the word. And, you know, I go along with Dr. Claude Anderson's definition of racism. I don't know if you know him, but it's a competition between groups. And we're at the bottom. At the bottom. Okay. And then we want to fight each other. Um, it's just such a disservice <laughs> that I mean, and, and here's my thing. I like to use my own personal story. Right. Like I, I've been to prison. I've been at the bottom. Right. When I was released from prison, I was given a $25 check and told, here, go start your life over. I was a single mother at four children. My mother and my grandmother had both died very early on in my incarceration. So I came home to nothing more than two tombstones and four children that were waiting on me. Here's the thing. I couldn't, no one wanted to give me a job because I was a convicted felon. And I was also denied government benefits because I was a convicted felon. But that ended up being the blessing that I needed because I, it, had I received those benefits, I would have never gotten up off of my seat and discovered my greatness. Because I was denied, I realized that I had a greatness inside of me and I started writing. And then from there, I started my own publishing company. As if today, I've published over 100 different authors. I have a nonprofit organization. I've found my way to financial freedom. I'm not dependent on the government. I have something to leave my children. So when we're talking about walking away from the plantation or bettering ourselves or as black communities to finally be free, the only way that we're going to be free it's through financial freedom. And as long as the Democrats That's have right. us stuck on okay, welfare. The only way we're going to be free is through financial freedom. And I think that's something that Booker T. Washington talked about, too. See, we don't know history, okay? We don't know context. We don't know world history. And we don't understand human nature. And that's a problem. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Because Booker T. Washington talked about indep being independent financially. That right. was in the 1800s, and here we are dependent. You know, when uh, LBJ gave the um, memorial, the uh, commencement speech in front of Howard University in 1965, he was concerned that uh, two parent, the two-parent household in black families was only 64 percent. That was in 65, mm -hmm. and now we're at the two-parent household is at 27 percent. And, and I always say the family is the most important institution. The family in is the most important yeah. thing. Any time that you, you, if you ever study history, any time that they want to take over um, a community or take over land, what's the first thing they do? They remove the male. Look at how our families have been broken now. Our men are in prison, so we've had children grow up without fathers. Who have they adapted to? Their mothers. So now we see our young men taking on these feminine ways. And Feminized. it's like they have completely like made it a crime to be masculine and when we don't have any men anymore then we don't have anything and then you have the me too movement that says believe all women no so. not i can't <laughs> believe all women that believe in aborting their children i mean we are aborting our future absolutely we don't know who god put in us how many martin luther king juniors have we aborted so far i mean you know and they love obama how many obamas <laughs> have we aborted we don't know which child is going to be the one to Get our, get our entire families out of poverty. Um, they focus so much on trying to sell us this lie that abortion is health care. Um, I'm a woman. I was designed to give birth. How is health care going inside of my womb and ripping a baby out of my womb? How is health care me sacrificing my children to the abortion mill? So I think that it's just time for us to wake up and realize exactly what we've done. 
because we have contributed because we didn't know any better. Right. But, well, our leader, but our, you know, but this is the thing: our the black Democrats, politicians, the black preachers advocate for it. Exactly. All the preachers in on it. Exactly. So they they, on they're it. supposed to be our so-called leaders, the Al Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, mm -hmm. the Cornell West, the All black Black Academicians, the Michael Eric Dyson. They're supposed to be leading black Americans. Do not Amer trust exactly. anyone that tells us to abort our children. One thing that every real leader should know is that there is strength in numbers, and our numbers are low. Very. And getting lower by the minute. And let me tell you, uh, black the Black Panthers initially and even Jesse Jackson were anti-abortion, mm -hmm. but they changed their platform. Mm -hmm. They changed their platform for yeah. I. Be, when, they sold us out. I think when Jesse Jackson was running for president in the eighties. Yeah. So you know, and and not to mention that abortion was designed to get rid of us. Margaret I, Sanger, she yeah. was a eugenics. I mean, she was right. racist. She said that black people were like weeds that need to be exterminated. Exactly. They put all of their Planned Parenthoods in minority areas. Right. They sold us this lie that abortion is health care. No, it's not. We're doing them a favor. We're playing right over into their hands. Just if we 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 like to stand as black people, we like to stand on the front lines and fight racism and injustice. But we don't understand how racist and injustice it is for us to murder our own offspring. These are lives that have been created that we are ending. They can't tell me anymore that it's not a life because if it's not a life, why do you need an abortion to kill it? If it's not a life, I wouldn't have to need an abortion. If we don't abort these children, they would live. So that lets me know that someone's life has been taken. And I think that until we as a community start understanding the importance of our lives, start valuing our lives, including value. the value of our own children. It's about self-esteem. We can't Let me ask you, anyone else to do it. If these folks were raised with fathers, they would value, have higher self-esteem and valued yep. life in themselves. Yep, and but, I mean, even with the Democrats, even going all the way back to Section 8, remember they said, hey, we'll help you, we'll give you a check, we'll help you take care of your children, but the man can't live in the home. That's a part of family separation right there and keeping you stuck because as long as you're on Section 8, you can only make a certain amount of money. As long as you're on welfare, you can only make a certain amount of money and you have people that are scared to step out on faith. They're good with being comfortable. They're content with knowing that regardless of what I do, my rent's going to be paid by the government, and I'm going to get these five or $600 a month in food stamps. That part we can live with. It is a crutch because as long as you stay there, you'll never start your own business. It's just like your kids. Eventually, we have to push them out the nest. But if I've got three sons, if I let them stay home and live with me and I pay all the bills and don't force them to do anything, guess what they're going to do? They're going to sit there and do it. We need to give our people that initiative to even with the government shutdown that just happened, everybody panic. That should show you that you need to have another way to make money. What are you going to do so, if you lose your job? It's so pathetic. Right? It's so sad. We should all want we've to be here, business you know, owners. We've been here. Exactly. That's what I advocate, that black Americans, black men need to start partnering with other black men and open up businesses. That's just the bottom There's line. There's no excuse. And just, it's sad because and as need a to black person... Democrat. I'm constantly fighting this, and I'm constantly yeah. preaching, but I'm constantly attacked by my own community. I know. Um, I fought very hard. It. They don't get it. I fought very hard. I work with this administration to help get the First Step Act passed, which a lot of people don't understand is the first part of reparations for us. Get black men out of prison. They can't do nothing if they're in prison but sit in a cage. I need to be free so I can be free, so I can work, so I can take care of my children. But even in the First Step Act that Donald Trump passed, there's a clause in there that they'll never be able to chain another woman to the bed again during childbirth. That's partially in part due to my story. And to be hated for that, the thing about it is it's not going to take away my experience. I've already done it. So the people that I'm fighting for now are for the people that are coming behind me. Nothing is going to change my experience. It's just so much hate when you decide that you no longer want to be a Democrat. I know. They can't believe it. Well, you know, I always say I support Trump. I, you know, I used to be a Democrat. I voted for Obama one time. We all used to be, right? We all did. We voted for Obama because he was black. We didn't care anything about policy. We didn't know anything about The majority about of us didn't care anything about policies. We just, for us, it was about hope. It was about just seeing a black face inside of the White House. Right. But... That was the biggest misconception. It was a mistake. To to man and that's now. not going to happen again with Kamala Harris. He, is, he has destroyed <gasps> America. That's my opinion. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs>
<laughs> that's why we but that's why we right. can't it's like no way I can't go back to that right no and way. come 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 on our Harris will be worse they took God out um and so much lawlessness in um, and now, you see what Hollywood now is they push it for a hundred different genders and sixty six genders. And now men are women. First of and all, and really men in dresses first of all, in the, at the image. I am offended. I'm offended because I am a woman. <laughs> if black people are offended by white people wearing black face, why are women not offended by men that want to dress, dress up and act like women? That's offensive. It is very offensive. And then it was like even when the whole game and they want you to even call them girl. Mm -mm. Oh. And they want to, that's my whole point. Like, my thing is, <laughs> everybody, you know, has the right to believe what they want to believe. But when you start trying to force your beliefs on me, not only that, our children, look what they're doing. I just saw online Mattel, Barbie, they've just come out with a line of dolls for gender neutral children. Why are they coming after our children? Everything in television, even with the cartoons, even with the whole LGBTQ movement, all in Target, all in Walmart. You got all of these rainbow colors. Why are we forcing sexuality on our children? You know, and I saw a black woman speaking before Congress the other day saying that she was binary. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? And you know, we embrace anything that the left. Anything. And it, we it's embrace ridiculous. It. And it doesn't Binary. make any sense what at the? all. And then, they, and then, and then they want to ban you and say you're homophobic for not believing that a man can become a woman. Listen, you can cut it. You can tuck it. But you still will not have a womb. The word woman is derived from the word womb. You still cannot give birth. We need to get back to common sense. I know so many of us lack it. So sad. It was, well, they don't. Have, they're not. They lack knowledge. Yeah. That's what I, you know. They just have been stuck. But you know, I really try to get them off. That's what my show is about: is getting Democrats off the Demo Find out how the Democratic Party has destroyed Black has destroyed America. Us. Yeah. Has destroyed us. And and it's time to walk away. It's because time the to thing walk about away. it is, is what is the definition of insanity? Oh, as you blacks, have the walk away move. Mm -hmm. That's you. As blacks, Remember. <laughs> Yeah, as blacks, we have um, voted Democrat for the last 56 years, and it's gotten us nowhere. You were with Brendan Strzok, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, I was there. At yeah, Beverly I think Hills. I remember. Now we, now we yeah, were there. Yeah, everything was coming <laughs> back. And, yeah, and you said, oh, I want to be on your show. Well, see how it happened? Yep, God is so good. See how that works? Yep, absolutely, because I think you were telling me about your show <laughs> Exactly, then. when you said, yeah. walk away, I remember. Yeah, I'm yep, and I mean, we've been voting Democrat for the past 40, 50 years, and here's the thing. I mean, What's the definition of insanity? To continue doing the same thing and over and over again? and expecting different results. Exactly. It's not going to happen. The Democratic Party was founded by the KKK. Right. The Republican Party is the party of liberation and freedom. Right. Freed the slaves, gave them right. voting rights, gave them citizenship. They always say that it was a party switch. Here's the truth about what happened. My uncle, Martin Luther King Jr., was arrested in Georgia. When he was arrested, they contacted the president, who was Nixon at the time, to see if he would get Martin out. Nixon wouldn't touch it. So they ended up going to Kennedy, who was actually a congressman in Georgia at the time. Kennedy asked for a favor from the Georgia governor and got Martin out of jail. When they did that, Kennedy came and ran as a Democratic president. When Kennedy ran as a Democratic president, blacks followed him because he freed Martin. But here's the thing. The founding principles of the parties have never changed. That's why the Democrats are advocating for us to abort our children. This is about death not life and then they frame it real pretty for us and say it's choice it's pro-choice you're taking away a woman's choice well what's the choice life or death for your child if the mother has the right to murder the child in the womb why doesn't the father have that same right if the father murders the child in the womb then he'll get charged with murder but if the mother does it it's pro-choice listen the baby belongs to both parents well you know that's what dave Chappelle said in his uh recent stand-up economy i heard it sticks and he stones. said if they can kill him we should be able to abandon him that's what he's you, you took the words out of my mouth I, I didn't know what i was gonna say but yeah. that's exactly what he said he did if you can kill him men should be able to abandon him yep well that's so if the that, government is going to make men be responsible for their children up until 18, make women do the same thing. There's nothing wrong with... Here's the thing. If Planned Parenthood actually worked, we wouldn't even need abortions. Planned Parenthood is not working. They're not planning these pregnancies. They're allowing them to get pregnant so they can abort these babies and sell their body parts. I mean, it's something that we all have our eyes closed to. But we need to wake up and we need to stop sacrificing our children to the abortion mills. I heard you. I heard you. Well, I want to thank you. It sounds... 
I want to thank you, Angela, Miss King. I did meet you at the uh, event that happens in Beverly Hills, and I didn't remember when you came in now, but when you said walk away, that triggered it for me, that I had yeah. met you. With Isaiah Washington. Exactly. Yeah. No, it wasn't Isaiah Washington. It was Brendan Brandon Brandon Straka. Straka. Yeah. Yes. And it's I, his event, but Isaiah was there as well. Speaking. I didn't meet him, but I met we, you we and met I me. spoke. Yeah, and I we told did. you, Yeah, and you said, oh, I want to be on your radio. Well, look, it's happening now. It happened. So I want to thank you, Angela King, for thank being you. a guest on the Naked Truth Report. Uh, this is going to be played on my show. I want to give you my card and have you call in again and be talking. Absolutely. Show. And we can about talk it. about criminal justice reform, which is something that I'm heavily, heavily involved in. Um, we have a huge criminal justice reform panel happening at um, Amp Fest um, next month in October. Where is that website, gonna be at? It's in Miami. It's going to be at the Trump National Door Rail. So I would encourage everyone to come. That website is AmericanPriority.com. And you guys can also follow me on Instagram, The Angela Stanton. Um, and please check out our website, www.theakf.org. Sounds good, Angela. I love the way you put your, the words together. It was so passionate and accurate. Yes. And I'm glad that you said those things. And I'm going to have you on again. I never Thank knew, you. I didn't know you talked about it that way so passionately. And I... And accurately, but now I know. Now I know. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>